morning. It's Friday, February 5th. And I look at what's happening in the last couple of days, and I see that we have a Republican Party that is waging a civil war. This battle is between Donald Trump and his allies and the rest of the Republican Party. And Donald Trump and his allies want to take control over the Republican Party, even though he's gone. His shadow lingers on. So they are not giving up control of the Republican Party without a fight. And the first battle was over Liz Cheney's role in the Republican Party. Right now, Liz Cheney is the third most powerful member of the Republican Party. She's a Republican, the lone Republican congressman from Wyoming. And she happens to be the daughter of ex-Vice President Dick Cheney. So she has a pedigree, a political pedigree, and she voted for Trump to be impeached. And that's what set off the Trump ally. So in the first battle to have her unseated and replaced by God knows who, the Trump allies lost by a huge mark. They lost 145 to 61 in favor of Cheney. So why would they continue this fight? Why would they think that they could continue this fight? When if you look at the numbers, you can assume that they will probably be the same. Two-thirds, at least, against the Trump ally. So I would expect they should give up, but I don't think they will. I'm not guessing about that, because Trump backers have vowed to defeat Cheney and other Republicans who voted for his impeachment in their future political races. So that means that they are going to mass a campaign and support any candidate that's running against Cheney and whomever else voted against Trump by voting for the impeachment. But I assume that the candidate that they're going to support will be a Republican. I'm sure they're not reporting, supporting Democratic candidates in those upcoming local races. And listen to how weird this whole thing gets. While these Trump supporters were attacking Cheney, and many people, many people are very scared of Trump and his backers. So while the voting of the demotion of Cheney, the party's highest ranking female member, House Republicans did not even consider punishment for the far-right Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene. She is the Republican congresswoman from the great state of Georgia. She's a pro-Trump conspiracy theorist whose social media posts have expressed support for violence against political opponents. It's one thing to argue against a political opponent. It's another thing to threaten them physically. That's a big no-no. And you can be sure that this furious intra-party clash is only going to continue when the Senate opens the second impeachment session of Donald Trump. There is no question that the Trumpers still plan to back primary challenges to Liz Cheney and the nine other House Republicans who voted for impeachment. They have vowed revenge on any Republican senator who votes to con- convict Trump in the impeachment trial. Now, Mitch McConnell, who I consider the most evil man in government, made a point of telling people that he has not spoken to Donald Trump since December 15th. And he put out a statement calling Cheney an important leader in our party. McConnell also spoke out against Green, saying that loony lies and conspiracy theories are a cancer for the Republican Party and our country. Now, this is from a man who stood by Trump for three and three quarter years. So his statements are not to be taken lightly. He's still a very powerful person in the Republican Party. 
So I would think that those Trump allies who look around can see defeat looming in the, on the horizon. Yet they are stubborn and stupid, and they are going to continue this ridiculous quest to turn the Republican Party into the party of Trump, or to maintain the party of Trump. This is a very unusual situation in this country. In years past, when the president lost the election, they acted like gentlemen. They shook their opponents' hands, they wished them good luck, and they moved on because they knew that the country needed and decided on another leader. And they knew that what was best for the country was an appropriate action to confirm that the new president was in fact the leader that the people wanted and that you had to respect the decision of the people. We the people, remember that. We the people, the first three words in the Constitution. So these actions by the Trump allies are heinous and are to be condemned by anyone in this country who has a decent understanding of what the Constitution means and what it means to be a democratic nation. We may have differences, and we have many differences, and we have people far to the right and far to the left, but we need to bring these people together. We need to have a compromise situation. We cannot have this constant quarrel that has been going on for like eight years within this country. And one way for that to happen would be for the Republicans to come together first. Why are the Republicans setting such a bad example for the rest of the country? Why are they hanging on so tightly to Donald Trump? Was he the greatest man that ever lived? Not by a long shot. Not by a long shot. My 15-year-old grandson reads better than he does and speaks better than he did. He was a disgrace to this country. And people should wake up and understand that. And the way to do that would be to go quietly and consolidate with the rest of the Republicans. Not every Republican thinks alike. They all come from different parts of the country, and they need to understand the meaning of unity. Now, this does not excuse the Democrats from any of this stuff, because they have equal problems. While they were the winners, they have to work very hard at compromise. And compromise will not come easy as long as the specter of Trump hangs over the Republican Party. And so I will leave you with all those thoughts, and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.